President Obama has signed a bill into law that further strengthens the government's ability to crack down on public protests. Though most of the law isn't new, civil liberties advocates and protest groups are concerned the vague language could lead to abuse of power and suppress future demonstrations by the Occupy movement and other groups. From Washington, D.C., FSRN's Alice Olstein reports. With the official name Federal Restricted Buildings and Grounds Improvement Act and almost no opposition in Congress, H.R. 347 quietly passed the House and Senate last month and got the president's signature Thursday. Florida Republican Thomas Rooney, who sponsored the bill, called it common sense. This bipartisan bill would improve existing criminal law to ensure that the Secret Service can continue to implement strategies that prevent potentially catastrophic security breaches. Just three congressmen voted no on the bill, Minnesota's Keith Ellison, Michigan's Justin Amash, and Georgia's Paul Brown, while 42 didn't vote at all. In the Senate, the bill passed by unanimous consent. But the American Civil Liberties Union and other First Amendment rights groups are concerned certain provisions of the bill could be used against peaceful protesters. These you know, security measures are being used in a way to either discriminate against certain protesters or to move inconvenient protesters away from cameras or to somehow quiet their message. That's Gabe Rotman with the ACLU. He says while most of the bill has already been law for many years, the part changing the legal standard of intent is of most concern. Previously, you had to act, quote unquote, willfully and knowingly when you did any of the various types of activities that are, are covered under, under the statute. And that means that you had to know that you were acting illegally. The bill that the president signed changed that standard to just, quote unquote, knowingly. So you would have to be aware of the underlying facts of the offense, but you wouldn't have to necessarily know that it was illegal. The bill also covers any area where someone under Secret Service protection is temporarily located, meaning protests directed at Rick Santorum, former President Bush, or a visiting dignitary could be legally suppressed. Nobody would argue that there's not a legitimate interest in protecting public officials you know, from harm. But when you're using that, again, as, as a pretext to keep anti-war protest, Tea Party protesters far away from the candidate, and you're, you're using those security measures as a pretext to somehow diminish the strength of their message, that's a violation of their free speech rights. The act also says the Department of Homeland Security can apply these statutes to anything they designate a national special security event. But this and most other provisions in the bill have been on the books since 2006. Mara Verhaden Hilliard with the Partnership for Civil Justice says there's a lot of alarm and misinformation surrounding H.R. 347, and she's concerned that will deter people from protesting. We've been getting so many calls for the past weeks with people asking, can I no longer protest? Is, in fact, it criminalized? And that's unfortunate because the most important thing is for people to come out in the streets. What is new about the law, says Verhaden Hilliard, is extending the protected area to include the White House grounds, which will further enforce what she calls the tourist double standard. Essentially, hundreds of tourists block the White House sidewalk every day, but only activists are arrested for doing so. As H.R. 347 takes effect nationally, local councils and cities with upcoming conventions are passing their own controversial bills. Looking ahead to the Democratic National Convention in September, the Charlotte City Council passed a set of ordinances in January that expand police power and restrict where and how activists can demonstrate. Under the new rules, the city manager, who is not elected by the public, can declare something an extraordinary event and limit the times and locations of demonstrations at that event. In January, Occupy activist and veteran Lyndon Hudson testified before the Charlotte City Council against these new measures. The problem I see with this ordinance is I just see it as a number of form of taking away and oppressing our freedom of speech. The Charlotte ordinances, approved 10 to 1, won't end after the DNC protests and will be in effect indefinitely. Chicago has also passed ordinances for the demonstrations at the NATO summit in May, which quadruple the fine for protesting without a permit and allow the mayor to install surveillance cameras across the city without oversight. But Occupy and other groups say the rules will not keep them from protesting. Alice Olstein, FSRN, Washington.